this is part 10 of the Swan Princess Read Along. Oh, Dad! The shout tore Puffin's throat. He hurtled downward. Boom! His body made contact with one death. The two of them jolted away from each other. Liz, Derek, Daryl winged between them, slicing off branches of trees. Off trees. Odette regained her balance and took to the sky. She bet her, beat her wings furiously, starting straight ahead. That was close, Puffin said, struggling to catch up. We never planned that, Odette replied. Puffin looked down. He saw Derek racing after them, following their shadows. The plan is working, Puffin cried out. He, here he comes. When he looked back up, up, Odette was far behind him. Hey, slow down, Puffin yelled. You're going to lose him. And as he flew as hard as he could, with a desperate lunge, he grabbed her feet. You're gonna leave your prince in the dust! He insisted, climbing wing over wing up Odette's back. But Odette wouldn't listen. Fear propelled her forward. Fear for her life. But her mind was in a jumble of frantic thoughts. Derek had it recognized her. Of course not. She hasn't. She haven't expected to. Who? So why? So why? She flown so close to him. So why haven't she? Why haven't she followed Puffin's plan to lure Derek back to the night? Now he was after her. But why? Why did he want to shoot her? What did he mean by saying this one's for Odette? Puffin clawed his way over, over her back, leaning forward to look over her head and into her eyes. Swallow down! It's too dangerous! Odette replied. Too dangerous? He can't even see us no, uh, anymore, let alone Zane, an arrow shot between Puffin's legs. Legs, ah! Speed up, girl! Puffin glanced be Well, he saw the top... And saw the top of Derek's head directly underneath him. That boy of yours can move! He's too close, Puffin! Odette crying. Don't worry, Odette. I've been taught what to do in this situation. Now Derek found a clearing with... Clear with a clear straight line to him. Oh, Dad! With a look of grim determination, he was setting up a shot. Well, oh, Dad demanded, "I'm sinking! I'm sinking!" Derek pulled back his bowstring. Puffin! Oh yeah! When when the archer has you in his sights, fly into the sun and use its light. Follow me to the. Their left, the setting sun had swollen into a bright orange globe. Blah. Together, Puffin and Odette flew directly into it. Puffin glanced quickly behind. Derek was showing his eyes. His bow wo lowered to his side. <laughs> Puffin laughed. What did I tell you, Odette? Now all we have to do is stay in the sun. They were able to do that for about two minutes. The sun seemed to flatten in against the horizon, then dropped out of sight. Puffin and Odette both gaps. All right, don't panic, Puffin insisted. Don't panic. Behind them, them Derek emerged from a dense grove of trees. He climbed a rock, planted his feet, and lined up his sights. Odette! Puffin shrieked. With blinding quickness, Derek released another shot. Into the trees! Odette son. They dropped to the branches boom. Whoa, the arrow whizzed by them again. Crying out in frustration, Derek jumped off the rock and onto a tree. 
He climbed the branches and looked around. Puffin and Odette flew well. Derek was well above them now. Suddenly, they glided onto a branch below Derek. They were hidden by the well dense. They were hidden well by the dense berry covered foliage. I hope you know what to do now, Odette we whispered. Because if you don't, we're dead ducks. Puffin nodded solemnly. All birds remembered the possum said, when there's no escape, you have to play dead. He plucked a cherry, put it between his teeth, and bit down. Bright red, red juice splattered onto his white feathered belly. Gives the right touch, he said blink. Now wait until I give you the signal. Puffin fell backwards off the branch. He landed to the forest floor with a dull thump. <coughs> Puffin cried, staggering around in make-believe pain. With a final scream, he collapsed and lay slow. Slow. Derek climbed down. He tiptoed closer, his brow fur furrowed. Through squinted eyes, Puffin saw Derek's foot trudging near, ready to nudge. No. Snap! Puffin clamped his beak down on Derek's toe. Ow! Derek grabbed his foot and hopped in pain. Puffin took to the sky. Caw! He trumpeted. The signal, Odette unfurled her wings and flew as fast as she could. The two of them soared over the darkening countryside. That will put some distance between us, Puffin said. On a hill high above the lake, John Bob and Speed looked into the blue-black sky. The moon was just peeking out over the horizon. No sign of them yet, Speed remarked. I hope that pudgy Puffin knows what he's doing. When said John, John Bob said, but Speed and Sonny were focused on a pair of, of dots that had risen out below the above the distant tree chops. Incoming! He called out. John Bob followed his gaze to the sight of Odette and Puffin fast coming closer. Bring them in, John Bob! Speed said. John Bob plucked two, two fireflies out of the sky, holding them like torches. He waved them toward a clear pathway to the lake. Odette and Puffin changed course. They headed downward towards John Bob. As they lit on the rock, all eyes were riveted on the moon. The rising disk now flecked the treetops with white light. Below them, the lake lay still in darkness. Derek stepped out of the forest on and onto the shore of the lake, bow in hand. He looked around and wondered, taken in the water, the ravaged, the ravaged castle. Hidden above the hill, hidden on the hill, puffing, Odette, puffing, and John Bob watched. Derek in silence. Their plan worked. It's almost time, Odette, Puffin said softly. Look! Moonlight marched over the trees, slowly making its way to the lake. I... Uh, I can't do it, Odette cried. You have to, Puffin retorted. He'll kill me, Puffin. He'll kill me. If you don't do it now, Odette, you lost your chance for life, Puffin replied. Now be brave. Gently, supportably, Puffin placed his wing on Odette's back. The light was trembling faster, spilling over the red ridge of the trees crawling across the stone floor towards the water. Go! Puffin's voice was firm. 
Odette knew she had no choice. She spread her wings and lifted into the sky. Derek turned, his eyes locked on the swooping white bird. He watched, frozen as Odette landed on the lake. What? He murmured. Yes, Odette thought. Derek's shock had delayed him. After chasing her so many miles, he hadn't expected her to fly right to him. The opposite shore was now bathed in moonlight. The light crept closer, closer. Derek raised his bow. He lifted above his shoulder. Odette could see his piercing brown eye looking over the point of, point of his arrow. Arrow. The white was only a few feet away from the water. Odette looked to the sky. A thick clot of clouds nudged the moon. Odette gasped. Not now. Not now. Derek tensed his bowstring. Then like a giant hand, the clouds blotted out the moon. At the edge of the lake shore, the light disappeared.